I've, um, I've asked some people to add up some numbers for me so that, remember at the beginning, I asked you to make a prediction about whether you thought like was the chance very high, very low, as a percentage, what was your chance of winning and escaping Voldemort and rescuing everyone, or what were your chances of getting killed, okay? Now, don't actually say it yet, but who reckons they have the highest, that is the most optimistic percentage for the number of wins? Who thinks they have a very high number? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. Okay, Jordan, what's your number? 84. 84%. Oh. 84%. Anyone want to beat 84? We did, we got like 90%. 90%, okay. As a chance of winning, right? Chance of winning, only win once. We thought we had to only win once. It was like one roll. Oh, once out of the 10. Once out of all 10. Ah, no, no, so you misunderstood a little bit. Just like when I was talking about flipping. Right? It's like it's 50% every time. 50% every time. Does that make sense? Okay. Who reckons they're a bit of a downer, had a very pessimistic. Who reckons they had the lowest number? Okay, Tendai, what did you think? Like 40%. 40%? Anyone go lower than 40? Nathan? 7%. 7%. Anyone go lower than 7? 7? Seven? 7's our lowest number. Okay, now can I just say this thing here, what you just did, right? In some senses, this might be one of the most important lessons that you learned today, namely, this idea of, remember we said probability, and the name of the topic is probability, but it's really about chance and uncertainty, okay? We live our lives every day with chance and uncertainty. It's not as neat as a die. In fact, it's more like what this game is like, where, look at, look at the, um, the range of essence, and I assume we have everyone in between, okay? And that's kind of what life is like, right? Like, you're, you're not sure what's going to happen, but you have to make an action nonetheless, okay? This idea of estimating the chance that something will happen, right? This is a really, really important numerical skill, right? So that wasn't just a, um, that wasn't just a cheap shot, right? It was actually something really valuable to do. Now, here's the thing, right? We have data now, it's on the board, to actually work out a percentage. Because based on yours, for instance, if I was just, oh, this is Kyle, this is you, right? You're Daniel, okay? Now, if I just play this number of games, 10 games, right? What would you conclude is your chance of winning? 50. You, you'd assume it's 50-50. If that's all you've seen, right? Uh, I'm, I'm glad there's no one here who never won, ever, right? But suppose you played the game and it's like, I never won. I just lost 10 times in a row. It wouldn't be that unreasonable to assume that the chance is what's well, it's impossible or at least it's less than 10%, something very, very low. Okay. So I asked some people to prepare some numbers for me. Daniel, how many, um, did you do wins? You added up wins, right? How many wins in total are there on the board? 26. 26 wins, okay. Mr. Hughes, number of losses? 102. 102 losses. Okay, now pause for a second. I'm interested in a chance, a probability, right? I asked you about wins, not losses, even though they're kind of the same thing, right? So wins, the probability of a win, through this experiment that you guys have just done and you've collected the data, the favorable outcomes are 26. What goes on the denominator? It's going to be the total sample space. The number of times we play games, which is 128. Now I asked for a percentage, right? Can someone give it to me as a percentage? 25.4? We'll just go 4. Okay. 25.4%. All right. Who reckons they got closest to that number? She Rachel, what did you get? 25%. 20%? Anyone think they got ha closer got than 20? 25%. 25%. That's, yeah, that's, that's if you, yeah, that's right. If you didn't do decimal places, that's the closest you can get. 25% is our closest estimate. Now stop for a second. I want you to look carefully at your number. Look carefully at this number. Were you too high, too low, and how did you arrive at that number? Okay, I'd like you to make a heading, which is complementary events. Okay. Now we're going to start to get towards this number, but we're going to introduce this idea which is really just broadly useful, okay? You've met this word before, 
complementary. Um, you better probably do a bit of geometry, right? In geometry, if I have an angle like uh, uh, this, okay, I have a right angle in there, and then I've got some weirdo wiggly angle over there, A and B, right? You know that A and B, when you add them up together, you're gonna get 90, 90 degrees, because the right angle on this side, there must be a right angle on this side, right? So we say A and B are complementary. Now that's just really a general term. Complement, please spell it with two E's by the way. When you spell it with an I, that's like, nice haircut, okay? Complement, this is a complement, I don't know. The pronunciation is the same, honestly. It just means things that go together. Things that go together, right? So these go together, they make a right angle. That's what complementary means in geometry. Um, if your parents or you are like foodies and that kind of thing, they talk about complementary wines. A wine goes with a particular kind of food. It just means they go together. In probability, right, complementary events are, again, events that go together. Here's the way I'm going to illustrate it, right? Underneath here, when we played this game, we can work out pretty easily on any individual role, what's the probability of getting killed by Voldemort, right? We can, we can know this, right, because on the die, there are six faces, right? And Voldemort is one of those faces. He's the six, right? So we would say, this outcome is one out of six. Six, sorry. One out of six. One out of six. Six faces on the team. So then I would say, right, as you were trying to roll, you were trying to do the opposite of this, right? You were trying to do something else. You were trying to rescue someone, right? So I could say the probability of rescuing someone, and I'm just assuming, you know, when you when you first roll and not worry about the fact that if you've rescued someone, you can't rescue them again. Don't worry about that. It's simply the opposite of this, right? It's not one out of six, it's five out of six, right? Now just before you write five out of six, before you write five out of six, I want you to see that either this event or this event, one of these has to happen every time you roll. Right? Like, I mean, like I said, you know, if you rescued Hagrid, you've already rescued him. But you're not, you're not dying, right? So one of these must happen, right? In other words, thinking back to the words we had over this side of the board, right? One of these is certain or definite or sure. You'll definitely have one of these. So therefore, it stands to reason that the probability of this, probability of this, if it's certain, it should add up to... It should add up to one, right? Because it's certain, 100% chance, right? So I'm going to write the probability of rescuing someone plus the probability of getting killed by Voldemort. That's equal to one. These definitely have to happen, right? One or the other must happen for sure. They're opposite events, right? They go together and that's why we call them Complementary events. They're complementary, okay? They're complementary because one or the other must happen. Going back to flipping coins, right? Heads and tails are complementary events, okay? Now, come back to the die again, right? Let's think of, say, five and six. Rolling a five or rolling a six? Rolling a five or rolling a six are not complementary events, right? They are different but they're not complementary. Because you know what, I could just roll, and sure enough, I got a three, right? It wasn't a five or a six, right? So getting a five or a six is not certain, it's just, it's just part of it, right? So for instance, complementary, it's heads or tails, Voldemort or rescuing someone. They're the things that go together, hence complementary. Question? Does that mean that if you had, I'm sort of going with geometry, yep. that geometry, yeah, but yep. if you get a supplementary, Ah, okay. So it's funny. Yes, you're right. I mean, we tend to match those two words together. As far as I know, supplementary doesn't really have a meaning in probability. I think they kind of, they use this one up and they're like, yep, we don't need that one, I guess. Okay. But that's a nice thought. Okay. Now, I'm going to finish this off now, right? Because you already know what the probability of getting killed by Voldemort is, right? So I'm going to write this like so, just going down to the next line. The probability of rescuing someone plus this probability, which is just a six, that should equal one, right? One of these definitely has to happen. That's why it's a one. So now just rearranging, 
that probability of rescuing someone, if I take that one sixth over to the other side, that's what gives me the five sixths that you were already expecting before. Okay. Now I've got a question for you, right? Um, quick rhetorical question. If the probability of rescuing someone is five over six, that's quite high. If you crunch the number in your calculator, yes, so that's, that's like 80 something, that's right? That's why we got 84%. Ah, 84%. Percent. Okay. So why is it, if this is 84%, why is it that the probability of actually winning the game is not 84%? Danielle, what do you think? Um, because each number is one out of six. Yep. Which means you have one out of six. A chance to get um, like one, two, three. Yes, five. very good. That's right. So you see, right? The reason why this eighty-four uh, percent is it rounding up or down? I think it's rounding down. Eighty-three, eighty-four. Okay. This is just to rescue one person, but this you've got to rescue all five, right? So this is like it's a bit like saying, can you flip heads? over and over and over again. It's not half, it's gonna be a half, then it's gonna be a quarter, then it's an eighth, and then however many heads you want to flip, then it's gonna be less and less probable, okay? It comes down to a number like this, okay? So, one more little bit of notation. Because this idea of complementary events, right, is very, very important. Let me abbreviate a little bit. Let's just call Voldemort V, okay? So the probability of V is one over six, okay? Because it becomes useful to talk about things happening or not happening, we introduce this little symbol here, which is a little squiggly line above whatever event you're describing. Okay? Uh, it's like a tilde. It, it is the same kind of symbol we use for estimate, but here, what it means is complement. Okay? So it's like, what's the probability of Voldemort killing you? What's the prob probability of him not killing you? Okay? So this is like saying not whatever that is, the opposite of whatever that is, the complement. So this is um, the same as this, one take away a six, it's five six. Okay? Now just be careful, just before we um, set off on the exercise, we'll have about 10 minutes, okay? Note that this is the crucial idea here. Whatever events you want to think about, if they're complementary, they have to add up to one, okay? So for example, there are some events that you might think are opposites. For example, Whoops. The probability of it being sunny or the probability of it raining. Okay? Now these look like they're complementary, but they aren't, are they? Okay? Because, you know, it can be neither sunny nor rainy. It could be like overcast. Right? So these two don't add up to one. They aren't definitely going to happen. Neither of them might happen. Okay? So you have to be very careful about what's actually complementary together. 